Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another very exciting video. Today we're going to be looking at Enscape for Mac. Uh, finally, the open beta is available. It just came out yesterday, so I've downloaded this already. Been having a little play and we're going to basically take a first look live together. Um, so really excited, Enscape for Mac. I've been waiting for this for ages. So let's get into this. Now it's very exciting. Basically, I received an email yesterday from Tammy. Thank you, Tammy, announcing that the new Mac open beta is available for Mac. Now I've been waiting for this for quite some time, getting really excited. So if you haven't had the email, um, all you need to do is I'll show you how to get the uh, plugin installed. But let's go through the email first of all. So we're going to click onto the uh, web link there. And here we go. We've got the Enscape for Mac. SketchUp 2021 only at this stage. Okay, but this is just a first sort of open beta and there'll be some new um, information coming on this shortly, I'm sure. So have a quick read through. Let's click download for free. Then we click onto the get open beta now link. And once you've done that, basically you will receive an email in your inbox. Let's just kind of go back and that'll be this one here. So all you need to do now is basically click onto the download now button that will take you into the actual area where you can download the software. Let's click download and start downloading. As you can see, I've been doing this a couple of times. And what we'll do is basically just go and show the installer and simply double click to start that process. So here we can see it's guiding us through very straightforwardly to install Enscape in the, all the right locations. Let's just click agree and off we go and load it up. So as ever, I'm just going to put my password in and off we go, we're installing. Okay, so there's your first stage. Just get the software installed on your Mac and let's fire up SketchUp now. Let's just wait till this uh, finishes and then we'll be able to open SketchUp 2021 and basically get up and running. Now I'm really excited to see Enscape working on the Mac. It's been something I've been looking for for quite some time and it's super exciting, so let's just move that to the bin. So off we go then, let's click to start to uh, click onto our SketchUp, open up, and let's take our first look at Enscape for Mac. So here we go, here is our SketchUp opening up, and basically I'm just gonna open up uh, this sort of file that I've been playing around with in a few tutorials, and just take my initial look, one of my favorite buildings in the world, Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. Okay, fantastic. So you can see um, at the top of the screen, we've got a little warning that's telling us that it uh, prefers Mac 12.2, which I haven't upgraded to yet. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK anyway. And here is our welcome to Enscape Mac beta um, with the different versions as well. Okay, so you can see all the usual controls in here. If you're, if you're an Enscape user, you'll know this already, but I advise if you're new to Enscape, you wanna take a look at this and follow it through. So let's close the window. Okay, so uh, right out of the box, I can see that here, up on the top of the screen, we've got the Start Enscape. Um, let's just hide everything else. We've got the Start Enscape button. So look, without further ado, I'm just literally gonna click that button, launch Enscape, and just see what happens. Okay, so you can see we've now managed to open up our Enscape uh, window. Let's just kind of put this side by side. Uh, I've just got a little application where I can sort of dock, dock these into the side on the on the Mac, which is a really nice little application for doing split screen. Um, normally I'd actually run this on my second screen, but let's see how this works. Okay, so you're going to notice where Enscape appears. If you go to Enscape uh, extensions, you're going to notice all the commands for the Enscape are here, including uh, about and some feedback settings. You're also going to notice a palette of tools down the side now that you can bring up with the main buttons on. And finally, if I was to make this a little bit wider, you will actually see the Enscape buttons across the top here, docked in. And of course, you use nothing to stop you from removing some of these and um, rearranging them if needed. Let's just go for it as it is at the moment. Okay, so one of the first things that I'm going to do is to click on this button here, the synchronized views. And one of the real strengths of Enscape is that as we change through um, our scene in SketchUp, for example, so I'll just double click onto that scene to change and just allow the Enscape to modify the view. Actually, I think all of that was, was a different time. So I'm not really sure what all of these scenes are, but as I flick through them in SketchUp, you can see it's extremely nice how we even get uh, the 
kind of model building up. And we even get that little bit of animation on, on the Enscape side as well. Let's just go back to this original scene here. So at the moment you can see what happens is the rendering on this side is certainly a lot more uh, realistic than the SketchUp side. But to be fair, it can only render to the level of quality of the textures in this SketchUp model, which are okay. And they're designed to be a bit, little bit kind of graphical. But for the purpose of this exercise, I think you'll understand how this works. So what we're going to do now is attempt to just navigate through and get a feel for how smooth this is. And that's looking really good, actually. So basically using all the usual sort of uh, navigation commands, the WASD keys and Q and E for up and down, I can navigate through. If I do want to, remember, you can hold shift down to adjust the speed and just kind of adjust that speed just to kind of find and search for that lovely view that you're looking for. Let's just go forward a bit more. I think that's quite a nice little view there. So in fact, what I might do now is just pop into full screen mode for a second. Just gives me a bit more breathing space. And I'm just going to kind of search for the view I'm looking for. That's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is um, things like the lighting. So if I hold down the shift key and my right click, remember that we can just scroll through that lovely time of day. Look down in this corner here and you see you get that different sort of lighting conditions that Enscape can do uh, through the course of that day with the different sort of quality of lighting and rendering. Okay, so all of this looks pretty good at the moment um, and it seems very responsive. Uh, might be interesting for me to do my Mac update and see if the performance sort of changes, but I'm just gonna go with this for now. That looks really, really good. Okay, so I'm very happy with uh, the movement test. I'm very happy with changing the lighting. And let's have a look at something else now. We'll go into our visual settings. And as you know, with Enscape, uh, we've got a few nice modes here where we can introduce things like some outlines. Let's just slide that up and let it re-render. I can definitely see that the rendering is refining. Okay, and this is the case with all versions of Enscape. When you first sort of change it, you see it's a little bit pixelated. And then as the uh, rendering catches up, it smooths it out nicely and the quality improves. So that looks fantastic. This is sort of a really nice, what I call graphical view with these edges here. So the next thing I'm gonna try is, I just wanna drop down and do one of my favorite things, which is the white card mode. Let's see how this works. Oh, wow. So already uh, it looks really, really nice. Again, remember that I can just sort of spin the view and adjust that view of this sort of white card model. Um, always looks a bit more graphical with the edges on. So if you turn the edges off, that will look a bit more realistic. Okay, and then again, let's just try the lighting. So let's just spin the view a bit. Hold shift down and spin the lighting. You can also, by the way, use the U key and the I key on the keyboard, but you do need to just shut that visual window first. So here I am using uh, the keyboard to do this now. So I've just clicked the U key and the I key on the keyboard. Um, if you prefer, as I say, just hold shift down and you can actually do it a little bit more subtly, I would suggest, with the mouse. Well, that looks really, really good. For this sort of uh, level of model, that is a nice little view. Okay, so what we'll do now, I'm very happy with this view. I'm gonna do a couple of things. Firstly, I'm going to take a screenshot. Okay, before I do that though, I just wanna check my render settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see where we're actually outputting. Okay, so what we'll do, I normally render in 4K, it's a good benchmark uh, for quality and that's fine. I can always go up from there if needed. What I'm gonna do is just basically set the path. So if we just click uh, here, let me just change this folder. Let's just go through to where we're doing our tutorial and let's just make a new folder for renders. Okay, off we go. Great, so we've got our folder set up. We've uh, changed our resolution. We've got the automatic naming we can turn on if needed. That's fine. Everything else looks good. And um, the only other thing that I wouldn't mind doing is just checking my quality level. Okay, so we might as well just crank that up to ultra quality and see what happens. And by the way, this is a really nice new feature. You can create presets in here. Um, so I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so you can see with ultra quality, it has improved substantially. Let's go for it. Let's click the uh, create capture screenshot and just see how long this rendering takes. Um, now I'd be interested at this time just to bring up my activity monitor and go to my GPU history. So there's my CPU and there's my GPU. 
Let's put those side by side. And this is a really good way for you on the Mac to just see what all the different sort of processes are on your computer. But if you like, most importantly, what this shows me is that uh, the rendering is not really using much CPU uh, processing power. It's pretty much all GPU, as you would expect with um, a real-time rendering software. Anyway, that image is done. Um, so that was done pretty fast. Let's have a quick review of that image. So I've got my image here. I'm just going to open up for you and the one you saw on screen. Okay, so that's pretty normal with real-time rendering. The final quality rendered image will be better than even the preview that you see. So very happy with that. Okay, let's close these panels down. Uh, I'll move those just in case I want to bring them back in a moment. Okay, so let's just carry on with our little test in our window here. So just going to pop those tools open again. And I'm just going to pop back to uh, my normal settings, normal visual settings, just for a second. Now you notice um, I talked about the preset. So over here, basically, I've got some presets of some different sort of settings that I can play with. Um, so I've got like a, a nice little kind of what I call sectional view here. Here I've got a plan view. Let's just double click onto that one. So this is good for doing sort of things like plans. So what I wanted to show you was you can adjust the um, camera view. So if we go to parallel projection, that's how I got that sort of sectional view in there. And again, look, we can still navigate around and so on as well. Let's just adjust that time of day just to make that a little bit brighter. Um, and do remember, pop into the visual settings. You've got your kind of presets here. Uh, let's click on the polystyrol view. Let's have a quick look at that one. That's the white card view. It's also saved the view by the look of things. And um, we'll just go into the white card view. But basically, if I click onto my uh, Enscape window and just click synchronize, that will basically synchronize the view. Let's just click that button to what I'm looking at in SketchUp. So that's a really nice little aspect. So I'm just going to go up to uh, my views and I want to have a look at a top plan view. And I'm going to use my pan tool. Let's get my pan tool here just to pan that view around. Um, of course, we could rotate it as well, but fairly happy with that. So what I'm going to do is basically set this to, um, I think we'll go for normal, re normal render mode with some outlines in there. Let's go for it. That's looking really good. And let's basically just sort of frame up our view. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here and change that time of day just to get a slightly nicer sort of time of day with shadows. That's looking amazing, like nice little rendered sort of site plan. Let me just kind of zoom in a bit more. And I think that's looking really, really nice. So let's go for it. Let's render out that view. Click there once again. Let's just render out that render view. Go to our video into our renders folder. So off we go. Again, look, here is my GPU. You can see it's been busy in the background um, running Enscape and SketchUp together. So the better the GPU you've got, the faster it will render. And you can see that render is finished already. Okay, so here we can see the final rendering. Now for a site plan rendered from SketchUp, that looks really great. And it's a really good starting point. Maybe with a bit of Photoshop, I could really tweak and post-process that, that uh, image to tune it up a bit more. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to take a quick look at is how we can synchronize our views between Enscape and SketchUp. So sometimes you've got your saved views, as we talked about in here, that you can simply double click on and we're going to navigate through to those various views. But what I'd like to show you is I've actually got some scenes that I've set up directly from Enscape. Okay, so in order to do this, let's show you how this works. Let's kind of uh, set up a new view here. Let's kind of revolve this model around. Just change that time of day. And let's kind of get into a slightly sort of different viewpoint here. Let's kind of look down a bit more. Yeah, that's looking good. So let's say that I would like to capture this view. All I need to do is click onto my view management button and create the view. So let's call this Enscape Scene 2. And what's nice is you can also link it to a visual preset. I'll link it to the normal rendered mode. We'll click Create. And what you're going to notice now, over in SketchUp, that view is available for me to review. So very easy for me to set up multiple views uh, in SketchUp or do it the other way around and set them up in Enscape. So very, very nice new feature on the view management. We can just pop this window away and get back into it. 
Well everybody, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know your thoughts on Enscape for Mac. Um, is it something that you're looking forward to using? Have you tried it? Um, so if you're a Mac user, why don't you just get this downloaded and start having a play? It might be your first step into intro into real-time rendering. So very excited to be making lots more videos soon. Um, so if you're new around here, please subscribe and like the video. See you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.